Jet propulsion, poetry in motion. Spaz on the podcast, going to convulsion. Ready for the take Yo, E, this a cake wall. Let the K's off. Watch it take your face off. Children are never, never felt like the fate. Like the fate. I'ma start on the slave on shit. Slave shit. From the Bronx, call me Megatron. Megatron. Uniting colors like Benetton. Benetton. Blues and red, strong when we organize. Shorty up on morning side, told me I'm immortalized. Immortalized. Said my music is what caught her eye. Pull up at the open mic, rappers look mortified. Mortified. Call this shit a gift rap. You versus me, call that shit a mismatch. A is like a phenomenon. Superhero, I belong in Comic Con. See, this the realness. Homies don't feel this. Must be paralyzed. Your crib get vandalized. Always getting dirty. Can't be sanitized. Malcolm for the blacks, even for my Spanish side. Spanish. Now you hear me on production If you don't hear me then you know I'm up to something Up, to something. up the Annie Annie up like Grammy. like Grammy Always had a crush on Penny. on Penny Old school nigga going back to the future Kill him with my raps or I shoot ya Even in geometry I use Rick for my ruler So I hit the block and went straight to the jeweler, to the jeweler. Eric B is my president You can ask E about my relevance, my relevance. See I spaz on the podcast Poetry in motion Jet propulsion from the era that's golden. Spaz on the podcast. Poetry in motion. Jet propulsion from the era that's golden. Jet propulsion from the era that's golden. Jet propulsion from the era that's golden. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Jet Propulsion Lyric Podcast. You have me, M. General Sherman Collapsar. And tonight, tonight, we have, <laughs> check this out, we have Sharkula. Big yo, yo, yo. What, What's up, y'all? What else you go by? What's, what, <laughs> uh, Dirty, Dirty Gilligan, <laughs> Japan Handler, <laughs> Forest Faith, Cumberjack, uh, <laughs> Dustin Hoffman Estates. <laughs> um, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yes, uh, indeed. The ghetto scientist, uh, not the last, but not the only, but the only lonely, but not too lonely. <laughs> uh, and another one, uh, you remember them, uh, let's see, the, one of them Gillette brothers, I'm one of the members next to Willow Ski Rock, uh, of Gillette brothers, it's only two of us, you know. But it's definitely it's a few a lot a few dozen <laughs> mixtapes, and they were under the radar, of course, not even in mom and pop stores. But they're out there floating in someone's basement. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, <laughs> so it's a lot. Of, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of um, um, archives that need to be dug up. You know, at the uh, like archaeologists. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what? What do you? What do you originally hail from? Where do you? Where do you come from? Originally born, originally in Michael Reese Hospital <laughs> in 1973. <laughs> then I grew up around on, on Stony Island in the in the you know 90s, okay. in 90s and in, in, in Stony, known as Bill Hill. Okay. Then I moved out south to the hundreds, uh, and from to the hundreds, like, kind of far out in the hundreds. I can see the skyline of the Sears Tower from Halstead in the hundreds. Okay. But that was for 12 years out of my life. Out of, I'm not going to say my age. You can probably look it up on Wikipedia, but, you know, <laughs> uh, not to throw a bad brag in. Like, yeah, <laughs> this is, you know, by the way, that, that last uh, alias, um, the ghetto scientist, the uh -huh. never lonely, never lonely, lonely, but never phony. But, <laughs> you know, I'll just say, word up. You'll hear more from the kid in the future. Okay. But back to you, man. I'm sorry. So, no, 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 no doubt. No doubt. Because, you know, we want to get, you know, people to, you know, know where we're going with this. And so one of the things is that when did you discover hip hop? When did you? Uh, uh, oh, actually. Man, you want to hear the truth? Yeah. So I would hear my mother, my mother, which is the oldest of four, um, she grew up on the south side. She would, we'd go to the grocery store and they had music playing. 
like Curtis blowing the car and you know to be honest like my brother was into it my aunt was her, which okay. is her baby sister but to be honest she took us to see B Street and Breakin but before then we go to Zaire like most people <laughs> and you know and, yeah. and I got like a tape Fat Boys tape from my favorites in the 80s okay. it hadn't have been 84 or something 85. Yeah. but you know I was in to listen to Curtis Blow and Fat that's just my error uh -huh. that was actually before the 88 when like my older brother was like Brian he was like oh man EPMD Big Daddy Kane all these people my aunt my mother like in the cause that was it they're older like Curtis Blow on the radio, um, you know, right. my aunt was in the JJ Fad and she was in all that stuff. Heavy D Word Up magazines laying around in my grandma's house. Okay. So as a kid, I'm looking at these things before I got into the source. But it's so, uh, you know, you know, I saw I saw my brother like would break in the um basement. It would break. You know, okay. base living room. You know, yeah. basically that's my story. You know, <laughs> I mean, I heard Sugar Hill Gang on the radio, Curtis Blow. I heard so much stuff, but my um mother, my like, did, you know, they like, you know, later on, like, yo, JJ Walker was in that Treasures Three video or something, or in a Treasures Three picture. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. Like seeing it, let us know that that was wow. similar to to Dave Chappelle being in a Wu Tang video okay. but they did it and it made sense like because uh -huh. they were celebrities considered and the uh -huh. show was definitely kind of like hip-hop in a way if you think yeah yeah so uh, so so with that you know that that gave you that that taste of it so when you know yeah. listening on the radio you know and how did you discover WHBK though Oh man, that was a blessing. I was going to the end of the dial, like you just go. I'm going to the end, and I remember <laughs> that actually. It's funny because when I be at my uh, grandma's house, we get that in there, opposed to it's more staticky. The further past 95th Street you get, okay. and she was on 96th Street. So I'm like, man, I came across that. I think, you know, it was weird. I think I don't know how I did, but maybe it was left my eye was like I would go to the radio and I'm like boom you know on my aunt's radio or my grandma's radio and bam it was just in the and then I was like why can't I get this out here where I'm at <laughs> and so I put the wire all around my room and I was getting it clear from Friday Saturdays I hear like I remember Shh, dope on plastic <laughs> it'd be like static but I would hear all type of stuff from first priority like big bond and all this audio i mean i saw the audio 2 video uh, uh -huh. but i would hear rare stuff i was like i gotta check this out this is underground this is before the internet i had wires around my fucking <laughs> i mean she's my language my room and stuff are we all uncut we uncut <laughs> we all yeah uncut. yeah no doubt yeah <laughs> okay kids <laughs> well you know i mean i was i wanted to go rewind it i was in the I heard, I remember Curtis Blow, I remember Fat, Fat Boys, and that was like, as far back, that was kind of like some old stuff and Houdini and stuff, um, you know, they're laying around, I see that Houdini record, Friends, and, you know, a lot of stuff at that time, like, man, uh, you know, I would go through people's play, you know, records too, but I know it was, that was, I don't know, I just give a broad view of a few, you know? Okay, okay. You know? So... You know, not to be super too much. <laughs> but, you know, you know, listening to HBK, you get a different feel from... Um, oh, man, the yeah. Normal, the normal commercial kind of um, yeah. um, play, though. Yeah, definitely. You'd hear more than just the hot single. Okay. So, you know, the the mainstream hot single, you know what I mean? Yeah. So what was some of the stuff you was hearing on HBK that kinda caught your ear? Actually, um the group I'll be honest, let's see. I like listening to Ultramagnetic and C's Critical Beat Down. Okay. Uh um, you know, the Big Daddy Kane, you know, long you know, Long Live the Kane, uh Audio Two, Fresco and Miz. 
Super Lover, Super Lover C and Casanova Run. Yes, indeed. JVC Force. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> uh, Uptown Dope on Plastic. Yeah. Diamond J and Easy Rock. Yeah, that was classic. You would bring your show in with that, <laughs> you know. So, um, yeah. So some of those things is like those lyricists, those those that set that foundation, right? Yeah, definitely. Just a few out of uh -huh. so you know what I mean. So much out there you, that we heard, right? The ones that were fortunate enough and to reciprocate the love and and remember it thirty years later. Yeah. So, so also, so you listening to this, you know, what was, what was going through your mind when you was listening to, to these lyrics? How they do it. It's a, uh, how they do it. It's unbelievable. Cause at the time <laughs> I'm basically trying to spit on my back uh -huh. and do some moves out of, you know, I'm trying to like, <laughs> but I'm like, you know, I'm in the, I'm still young. I'm a teenager. Okay. So I'm like, how do you rap? I thought it was amazing. <laughs> They're rapping about, some guys like that, you know, that boy's jailhouse yeah, writer rap about pizza and getting in trouble and overcoming it. <laughs> so, but you, you, your, your basis, you started off as dancing. The dancing. Yeah, I was the, dancing. The, the dancing aspect of it. Were you out there yeah. battling? Were you in crews? Were you battling? Or what you was just I was, freestyling or just, you know, doing your own thing? I was always doing my own thing, you know. Okay. Always because, like, I, I I never like whenever I would just be down with people because you can only depend on yourself. And plus I would some people be saying the crew then they rooting for the enemy and they be two faced. So I was like, I don't got time for this shit. I was like a grown man at at a young age. Okay. I would just okay. like to show up unexpectedly at parties and see the guy with the biggest ego and try and deflate it. That was my whole goal. Okay. So, do you, you know, <laughs> yeah. So, what, like, at this time, what were you just like the before? Like, was this before the big parties in the clubs? You was going to like house party oh. neighborhood neighborhood things. Or Man, what? I started out dancing actually for a guy in Chicago Heights. We do some like his name, I, you know, um, was Father Time. Okay, and he, he back in the day, remember the McDonald's commercials? Yeah. Uh, basically, he knew LT Hutton that worked for Death Row. Now, you know okay. he that uh, he was a dancer. His father was a I don't know what his father did, but he was in in, uh, in Beat lived in Beacon Hill, and okay. so basically he was the one that got me and my friends, a couple of my friends that I went to school with. I don't want to say who they are, or what what school, whatever, but we um we would go around to places like. We were young, like 15, 16, go to like nightclubs where we couldn't get in. But since we danced for him, we do it in Harvey and Markham. Okay. You know, you know what I'm saying? If I'm not mistaken, Dick's more, you know, and we, mm -hmm. we didn't get paid, but we were just, you played a beat. We just, we were pretty good at little routines. And, okay. and then we just kept moving our way down, you know, chiseling on down to, the, to places like, you know, blue gargoyle okay. and suddenly hitting like lower links and then hitting places. We don't, like you said, like we didn't remember where we were going. We didn't, we were like, we were blindfolded, but you know, there's a lot of, you know, just a lot of paying dues, you know, that we yeah. weren't number, we weren't, we were, we wanted to go to more parties, go to the practice, the better we get when we get around people, you know, that are good and stuff, you know, and, and you know, you get, you get dissed and you get better. <laughs> you get you get better, yeah, and you just yeah. then. But I was not want to diss nobody. I wasn't getting dissed like when you for everyone when they first started they get dissed. But after a while, I was like, wow. I guess like years later, people are still telling me that man, you were raw back in the day, you know. Yeah. And it makes me feel happy because that was my escape, like any other kid teenager, uh -huh. to get out there and express it to the whole city and. You don't know anything about that person. You just go in there. You can say, "Hey, you know what? Oh, he does a move I don't do. You do a move I don't do. Who is number one, right?" <laughs> right. And you so know? that 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 was that was like you say that was your escape. That the hip hop brought that brought that escape for you. 
Yeah, and it was fun meeting people. I yeah. would always, you know, we didn't have a phone, so I have a always have a pen and paper and get numbers down. <laughs> Making those you know, contacts. And then find out about the, yeah, definitely. And then find out when the next party was. Okay. And so we, what, 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 what year we talking? What, what era are we talking um, what, about? When I first went to my first hip hop party. Yeah. And um, you getting into well, the dancing. Be, the dancing and I, it was like sophomore. I was like 16, 15, 16. Okay. I would go to different spots, like little parties or roller rink parties, little bars, like dancing for the, for, for, um, oh boy, you know, maybe a talent show here and there, but. You know, just okay. You know, it was from age fourteen, fifteen to to like all the way through, all the way up to when I hit thirty one. I kind of slowed down on. In my thirties, mm-hmm. my mid thirty, I slowed down on dance. I was like, you know what I mean. But I was heavy into it in the nineties. I go to every show. Okay. I think I see you at shows. So like, where I, you know, yeah. So like you would you would hit like what was going on in the nineties like. Um, um, Red Dogs was yeah. Red Dogs early nineties. Red Do- yeah, Equator Club. Okay, Equator Club. Uh, Alcatraz. Alcatraz. Yeah. Club. Club Mercedes. What was the? Um, they that was a- more so like little Cotton Club. Okay, and it was another one over there on Twenty Third in Michigan. Oh, was that the same? Um, well, because it changed oh, names yeah, a couple of that's times. That's Green Street, right? Green Street. No, more, more, uh, more over there by um, twenty. Uh, Funky, the Buddha Lounge. No, it's like more south. Oh, I know which one you're talking about. Oh, the rap, the trap, rap, rap trap, rap trap, rap trap, rap trap. Oh, I remember that, man. And also, yeah, I remember. You know this, the hot house. The hot house, yes. That was banging. That was fun. Yeah. And like, a, was that along like Elston? Elston. Was it along Elston? Dang. Oh, the autonomous zone. Oh, man. I don't know. My, <laughs> There's a lot of stuff. Man, there's a lot of spots. It was a lot of spots. And everything. A lot of places. Yeah. So um, you would hit all of those kind of places. Yeah, I would hit all those places up and. And they're playing these remixes of whatever. Maybe I heard it on the radio. Maybe I heard it from a DJ or crib. Or, but I just wanted to get on the dance floor and express myself with everybody else, you okay. know. So, what, what, because there's quite a few crews, though, you know, was doing it. Thing, but, oh, yeah. But you was, you never really got involved with any of the crews or you just was like no i was just down basically i was down with a lot of people because i noticed like years later like sometimes like i just i was like down with some people but i i learned my lesson by mentioning people because a lot of those people (laughs) in the in these crews don't want to even show the you know and some people show love and they don't realize people in their own crew ain't showing them love so i was like let me just claim myself shit so, you know, I guess that's that hip hop thing, that ego of, you know, not yeah. not wanting to share the, the spotlight or not right. wanting, <laughs> or, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it gets <laughs> complicated. You know, like a lot of yeah, a lot of people be rooting for a different person but be dissing their own crew. So I'm scratching my head like, dang, man, I don't know if I need to do I trust this person? Shoot. <laughs> so what? What they doing? You, I'm sorry to cut you off. I oh no say, problem. I'm just gonna say what brought you into the at from the dancing aspect until the the lyrical aspect of hip hop. Oh, I wanted to make people dance. I, I like. I wanted to make people dance on the other side of the coin because uh-huh. after a while, I realized that. You know, with the dance, there's only so much I could do, and and like a few breaking crews, I started to like actually I started pop locking and just you know doing that routines with like scoop and scrap or some old style though. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's why I could always break dance. I mix it up, but I started just going officially hard with breaking, and then some break dance crews on the northwest side. 
I'm not saying a name, one big name. They out there. I'm not gonna say the name. I don't want to even sound like that. They wanted me down. They wanted me to go. And when I went to a practice, I realized when I showed up, I was just looking to party, not compete. So I, okay. I just brought, I just brought a blunt, and uh, um, I couldn't smoke a blunt in there. Smoked outside and drank a few <laughs> uh, beers inside. I realized that yo, I'm not trying to compete against people with a judge because once again, the favoritism. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? I'm better off just doing this stuff for fun. Okay. Because, you know, it don't make no sense, you know. Yeah. So, but what what gets what caught you with the lyricism though? Oh, with the lyricism, uh, I thought it was interesting because I would be, you know, actually back in the day in in the late uh, '80s at like hip hop places, uh, spots and early 90s, I would be, after I get off the stage, after I get off the dance floor dancing cypher, I would jump into a freestyle cypher. And it would be people from all, anywhere. I was just like, man, I kept doing that. I started doing it in the, in the, in the cypher and the cars. And mm -hmm. and I was, it had it, I had it in me all the time. But I started getting around and improving and practicing. When I started in 80, actually I started in 87. But I didn't really think I got developed until later on, you know. Yeah. Just kept going. You know what I mean? You yeah. know, you start out like you don't sound great, but you have the drive. I'm so, still learning. I was still learning. So how would you describe your style? I mean, you know, people don't um, listen to your music, but in your art, but some, some people haven't, you know, a full concept of what you do. So how would you describe yeah. what you do? As far as putting these um, words together, yeah, I would say like I'm more, more like a time bandit. I'm in a time warp, so it's like um, what if I could say, I wouldn't even know if it's before his time or if it's at, or it could be. I haven't met anyone in the after and before me. Like I've met a lot of people before me. I've met I haven't met everyone after me, but I don't think it's a time warp. But I could I could say is. Futuristic, I can say okay. that. Okay. that. That's a better. That's a better answer, <laughs> right? Futuristic. <laughs> that you yeah. know, it ain't even. It ain't even. It ain't even came. Uh, you know, it, it's coming. It's here, but it's still coming. Yeah, still, still out. You know, in the mix. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, how did you put all these concepts? What well, I mean, you sitting here, you listening to. A Chuck D. You listen yeah, to that's a right. Cool G. You listen to a yes, a MOP. Yes, a, a Guru. Yes. You know you got the Ultra Magnetics. You have yes. You know Beat Nuts, and you know we talk about yes. this era. Man. Yeah. You know, so how do you you listen to this? How do you take what they doing, but make it a sharp, cooler Thigma jig? Oh, I just like. Because all those guys you mentioned, they're all original. So I just try and be original. Like, say I might do an album called Martin Luther King Jr. Wild with Cheese. Mm -hmm. And the concept is like, basically, you know, this is the price you pay for worldwide hip-hop on the underground. You know, you mm -hmm. can do it yourself the way you like it. But remember, there's a price you got to pay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like the WAP or not. I like the Whopper. Fuck the Big Mac. Sorry, <laughs> McDonald's. No diss. I love you, but I don't eat Big Macs or Whoppers anymore. Mm -hmm. That was as a, you know, as a teenager, man. Right. You know how we get in trouble. Right. That's high blood pressure, diabetes. And we're everything. not knowing no better until we get older. And and, and like what yep. happened? You know yes. what happened? Yep. <laughs> so what happened? Right. <laughs> so you know how, how important it is to you. You know because. You know, we came up in an era where you had different, you know, schools of um, faith floating around. You had the Ansars, you had yeah. the um, Five Percenters, yeah. Christians, Muslims, uh, atheists. Wow. You know, you had it all in that mixture of hip hop. Yeah. So, you know, did any of that filter into your rhymes? scheme or you just want um, more well you know one thing that I could say what what my mother said no matter what people ride on 
uh, just got to respect people for who they are. Mm-hmm. Now, if they're totally disrespectful, then it might not be worth it. Yeah. So I guess I just like, there's so many, you know how it was, you know, a lot of people saying 5%, that's, that's lovely and everything. And that's good. Yeah, I got into that. I got okay. into, I wasn't, I mean, I was more pro-black, but I didn't get too deep. Okay. You know, I just listen. I would listen to people talk, though, you know, and, and I respect that, you know, their their nature, how they do it, from X-Clan to, uh, you know, Public Enemy and, and, and Brand Nubian and, and yeah. you know, Dead Prez later and stuff. Right. So I, I was just basically trying to see, you know, because you put a lot of content <laughs> in oh. your music. So I'm trying to get to the oh. point of, you know, how did you, you know, as a scientist, how did you put this concoction together and, um, and make it work? How did you I guess, you know what, to be and- honest, oh, I was just a, uh, a student. And I think the, the groups that I like were the groups that, that were like, you know, they were just trying to talk about things that were real, the issues, and sometimes being brutal with the truth. Mm-hmm. But also throwing comedy in there a little okay. to loosen people up to a little some stuff. Um, it's a good question. Sometimes I I can't even answer some of these. <laughs> I think, you know, I can say is like, yeah. like you can say, like people ask you, how do you come up with these records to play up here? It's like, <laughs> You know it's all about God, yeah. and it's hard, you know. But I can tell you one thing: uh-huh. how do I, I think all the stuff that I took in mm-hmm. from GI Joe okay. to Fred Flintstones to Magnum PI, right? To you know, to to <laughs> hearing the hear. I remember on WHBK they say house music is mouse music, <laughs> but I know a lot of people that, I mean, it was real, they say that, yeah, chili but, uh, <laughs> yeah, right, he would say that, I'm not, I'm not going to get in trouble for saying that, no, right? No, 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 it's all good, because that's, that's just the history, that's just the yeah. history of, <laughs> the nature, it was the competitive nature of hip-hop. Right, you know, it, 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 you know, as we get older, we can laugh about these things now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, some people, yeah, <laughs> some people get really upset about certain things, you know, that were said, and but now, you know, right. it's, it's all it's all verbal jousting and competitiveness, you know, you know, because yeah. at one point you did have that com- competition of hip hop versus the house music in a club yeah. on the radio, you know, because hip hop was coming up, you know, yeah. for many house music ruled Chicago. Oh, like, um, one song I remember, I don't want to even throw that out there. You know, what song it is where somebody was, I was dissing somebody from another state. I don't want to even bring that, sh- that stuff up. Are you talking Remember about, that one? Is you talking about Cool Rock Steady? <laughs> yeah, that he was dissed, uh, he dissed Chris. He dissed. <laughs> yeah, man, I I was like, man, that's wild because I don't know. I just say no comment, you know. Yeah, I understand that, but I was I was rolling with this guy at one point, um, Project EMT, and yeah. he was down. He he would do some stuff for Chili Q. And uh, right. he had made this song. Uh, oh, I forget the name of the song, but it, it was a diss towards Cool Rock Steady, you know. And um, it was uh, and one of the lines was like, you know, Cool Rock Steady, you spaghetti head, you know. Oh man, <laughs> you know. But see, even then, you know, hip hop in Chicago <laughs> divided Chicago. Yeah. You know, because yeah. at one point, you know, early on, people were either Juice Crew, yeah, or they was down for BDP. Yeah, yep, <laughs> the, the legendary battle. Yeah, but it, Chicago, <laughs> even though that happened in New York, Chicago took sides here on the South Side of who was the dopest, and I, I remember that. That's one of the things I do remember is how. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and that's how people. That's how much people took hip hop to heart. Yeah, it was wild. It was wild as hell. 
the whole fact, it was just wow. Yeah. It was at one point. Yeah, it got to that point. It got yeah. out of hand. Yeah, it got. Out of- <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah, it got out of hand for real. Yeah, and so, but this is how much hip hop affected us. You know. Yeah, and we took we took certain things and certain groups to heart, even though right it was happening somewhere else. This is how we first got into it because you know to be honest nobody was really you know we'll make you know you'll get around your guys or whatever or you at school and you'll start you know trying to rhyme and you know and banging on the table right and some of your first rhymes were raps you <laughs> kind you heard but then you kind of changed the words to it to yeah fit it to you until you learn how to really Put write together yourself you know? yeah that's a that. Oh, you you know what, man? You know what? One of my first rhymes was talking about the sky is blue, my skin is brown, our hearts are red, so I'm like you. Or, <laughs> or one about abortion. This is more like when I was sixteen. It's a shame the baby is a victim. So I never hit him. He is she's not a victim of nine minute pleasure. Look, scheme and measure what the baby looked like. What it could have been. See, the baby could have been real smart, but the baby wasn't. So a guy eating like a pop tart. Uh, boy, it was about abortion. Okay. Wow. <laughs> With a, and, you know, threw the hanger in there. I was uh-huh. on some, throw a, I was like the, throw a hanger in there, or something that, that's mm. killing the baby. Stop abortion. Mm. And I used to rhyme with a cat named Stacy. I won't say his name because he ain't really doing. I mean, I won't say nothing like that. Uh-huh. He's, we're not doing. We're, it's not. He ain't. I don't know if he's pursuing that. But same time, I don't want to bring. Mm-hmm. Take someone out the great, you know, out the past, but that was uh, I tried to be a duo, but it didn't work. Okay, and and so I started rhyming with a guy in Hart in Hyde Park. I won't say his name, and I used to every day I would, you know, come home and call him on the land phone because okay. he he told me about different stuff mm-hmm. in like Hyde Park about like okay, here's you know, brand newbie is going to be at the auditorium on. Rex or somewhere in Bronzeville, you know, uh, but I was really okay. weird. We, we had some things going. We rap, we we're in the Dodge effects, mm-hmm. but we, we thought we were pretty good, but we, he, you know, I kept going. He, not, he didn't. Okay. But that's happening. And that it was happened. fun. You know, yeah, I would meet up. I thought it was cool. He lived on uh, Ken Bark and 53rd street. So I was right there. I go over there. I was like, we can listen to WHK mm. if I were to crash over at night. Okay. You know, his mother was nice. And sometimes she would, um, she order a pizza for his friends. I was one of them. And we'd sneak, we'd sneak out and smoke some bees, <laughs> you know, yeah. around the corner, okay. come back. And then, you know, we had some liquor we got from Kimbar. We got somebody <laughs> to buy it because we're too young. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It was like, yeah, I thought it was like heaven going to visit him, man. Right. You know, because you know, he got everything. And that's what a lot of people said, you know, in order for them to listen to like HBK, they get their way over to like a cousin, a friend's house to spend the night during yeah. the weekend so they could <laughs> so they can tape HBK, you know. Yeah, definitely. And, and it was good because it just, <laughs> yeah. Oh, go ahead, man. I'm no, sorry. I'm just saying. No, that's just it. It's just that. You know, people would, people would, was down to damn it, break their neck so they could hear this raw yeah. cut hip hop, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and it meant a lot to people. And, you know, looking back, you know, sometimes you don't realize this is that, you know, that the music really, in a sense, kept people going. It Ooh. really did because it did. A lot of people didn't have like the history books for lies a lot of times too. So we let, listen, Jungle Brothers, you don't know who you are. Look back in your past, brother. We hear that in more remixes on your radio. Mm-hmm. We wanted, we were more. We wanted, we were, we wanted more. And and and, and that's the thing, though, is that you know people were looking for um, knowledge. You know, they were looking for, you know, acceptance of, you know, I'm doing this. Wow, somebody over here, you know, I'm connected with people who is doing 
and listening to the same things that I'm listening to. You True. Know? And so it really did. It was an escape. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so what so we we talk in this mid nine early nineties and stuff like, you know, and then like you know had a lot of stuff going on like at Columbia College. Year to study public relations. Uh-huh. And I was working a crate barrel and car wash job on the side and hustling my little mixtapes. Okay. Study intro to public relations which I didn't like as much as psychology advertisement. Mm -hmm. I went there for a year, total of 12 credit hours a whole year. Like I took six per semester and you know, what is expensive. And I ended up, you know, later on paying my little debt later, Uh but I realized I was actually going, I would like to go to the library to do my homework because I didn't have time with two jobs. Okay. And I would, you know what I mean? And it got to the point where, I would hustle in between my things, you know, the, you know, before I go to work, you okay. know, just to maybe get a, maybe a train fare, mm-hmm. some weed and some more blank tapes. Okay. And, you know, just, you know, like anybody else prepare for the weekend because now we heard WHBK and we know where the next hip hop party is because people plug, we find out about all the events and local talent and global talent you know, and what's right. going on, you know, it's like you were kicking the current events too, like what happened in the streets type shit stuff, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I tried to mix, mix in a little of everything, you know, cause people wasn't yeah. really, you conscious. Know, get, well, they weren't conscious, but it's also that, you know, it was a lot of stuff that they wasn't getting. Yeah. And that's something that was dope because you shared it with us, yeah. you know, you know, and so that's 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 what one of the things that you know. I I, I do give credit to hip hop for providing that platform for us to be able to do this. Yeah, and, and so you know a lot of yeah you're right. My bad. You know, but also, but when did you start like? You know, because everybody know you now for the yeah new the the hand-drawn CDs and oh okay. yeah. So when did you start doing this? When did when? What was it before then? To how did you get to that point? I mean, you know, to be honest, I remember always as a kid. I remember we lived in Pill Hill. I was a little kid, uh-huh. and I would one time they always stuck in my head. We go to eighty. It was eighty-seven in Stony, and. I remember I was a kid just ducking out. You know, when you're a kid in the car, you're like, you know, it's wild out there. You're like, oh, God, it's crazy. <laughs> and then, like, we went, and I and on my way, I would see, like, writing on walls. Mm-hmm. And then also, I would, as a kid, then I was, and then I would see, then I got older, I started seeing them in the hundreds on freight trains. Mm-hmm. And then I, then I started actually, my friends started, they were, they were taggers. They were graffiti writers. I was the dancer and they were graffiti writers. I was a freestyler. And I said, one day I'm going to be good at, at freestyling and rhymes. But I also did that too, but I wasn't as like serious. But when you say the doodling, I was doodling like when I was young, like as a teenager, okay. you know, the simple fact I was inspired because of the magazines the, the, when the source was popping in the back, but even before the source, I think that when I saw B Street and well, it was everywhere. Like you had a cardboard, you want to put something on it, yeah. you know. But it's also you see it on the walls everywhere. Mm-hmm. When you see it on freight, you're like, man, this is supposed to be my calling. I'm <laughs> seeing it on freight. <laughs> in the alleys, I'm seeing it on walls. So I see people with airbrush and Word Up magazine, or like my aunt had one of her friends or she had airbrushed uh-huh. on her jeans and she was like reminded me of NC Light. Mm-hmm. You know, she didn't she went to Clark's high school she went to Clark College. Okay. So like I remember she you know what I mean, but I don't know, um you know what I'm saying? That was like kinda interesting because she had everybody's got an eye like that with style. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
And then they, they, they like, they see that, man, they find out they, they were into it, but you're really into it because now you got different platforms besides general, uh, you know, select radio dial. Right. You can go to the college radio to make it more exclusive. Mm-hmm. And that's when the other family members were like, dang, he took it to the next level. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, because now, you know, you're known around the city. Yeah. And other places worldwide, actually now, worldwide. Yeah. You know, yeah. for you know, your, your, your artwork. Right. You know, so. It's a blessing. So do you like what, like uh, Paul Robeson, the Renaissance man, the, oh. <laughs> you know, yeah. a little bit, you do a little bit of everything, a, a lot of. Yeah. Everything. Right. Yeah, man, you know, I appreciate you, you know, you know, acknowledging me that for that for real, you know, Real talk. I mean, but this Thank is this you. is this is this is this is how we know you though, as being right. <laughs> not just a MC, a dancer, but also, uh, uh, I don't know what the word for it, but art. You know the the the, the art, the, yeah. The canvases, the 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 creativity, yeah. Of of yeah. Because before you know you know people have done it you know, here and there, but you've taken it to a, such a, <laughs> a, a expert level. Thank that man. Thank you. Thank you. You know, um, it ain't, it, it's, 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 it's like, it, it ain't even, it's, 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 it's at a higher level than what's been done. Wow. I, I'm honored that man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just, I just want to, I just want people to understand, you know, one of the Word, things I'm, I I'm doing it. this because I want people to understand that the creativity, this is not just I rolled out of bed and slap yeah. something on a canvas or slap something on a CD or slap something on whatever. This is uh, took takes time and creativity. This takes a yeah. level of skill. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I enjoy doing it as escape. When you know how I was, we we're talking before a few days ago about when instead of instead of becoming negative, mm-hmm. just and and eventual, eventual, just do the best you can and and get it out. And that'll you like you said something that was important. Let your work show. Yes, yes. and I'm glad to put that work in. So years later. Decades, decades later, I could do an interview like this, which I couldn't predict that in the future, but I knew that some blessings would come about one day, and here I am in the mix of a blessing. We're yes, in the, you know what I mean? Yes, indeed. Let me, at one point, did JP Chill from HBK put out a project with you, or was... Oh, no, he would always... When I first did my first... Uh, when I played my songs, I would go. I remember I play. I can't remember what I played, but I played something up there. I think it was something off. I wonder which ended up on vinyl. Which the white label wax, my first one. Which I think that. Well, he bought a few. He always buy like five at a time. And in two thousand and three or something, five at a time was pretty good because I had extra money in my pocket now. Mm-hmm. And also, I went home and he played a radio when I wasn't around. Okay. Some guys had the record collecting dust and it wouldn't <laughs> get played, yeah. you know. Yeah. But y'all, excuse me, but excuse me, but y'all played it, okay. you know. Because okay. hey, there's a lot of people you played. Yeah, but I remember him being like, uh, lack, for a lack of a better word, one of the biggest cheerleaders for, for your work. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, and that's what that's what I respect it because I would that's why I would I would go there on sad. I was, this is where it's at because mm-hmm. this is this is the same person that took me through my teenage years and playing stuff that I love and and, mm-hmm. and that I listen to, and and when I finally when I first met him, I didn't realize like 
I was like, I mean, I did realize, like, I didn't, you know, I, you know, I'm saying, I, I was like, this this person is like the chillest person in the world. Like, you chill people too, you know. Yeah, but see, a lot of people thought JP Chill was black. Yeah, uh, exactly. Time. Yeah, and then they meet him. It's like he looked like Tom Cruise. <laughs> right, right. He did. <laughs> yeah, he did look like Tom Cruise. You know, and it's like this is the guy that's playing. You know, right. That was some real hip hop stuff, there, man. You know, so, <laughs> you know. Well, so you know, this is you know one of the guys who like i do remember this is like yeah <laughs> you know when i wasn't doing my show i was we'd co- go up there and, and and chill with a man he'd like oh this is the thing with jig and he put it in and he'd be bouncing and dancing to it and word you know wow so, you that's, know man that means a lot because <laughs> remember he was he got mentioned at w in uh in the source magazine right right and other places too. Yeah, but here he, you know, here he is in the station. He's dancing to a Thigma Jig record, and he's like, "Yo, this is this is dope," and you know, and wow, very few times you've seen that reaction from him. Wow, that means that means a lot. Like that really made my night this glorious Sunday night. Yeah, man, yeah, that's, thank that's, you. That's, that's 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 one of the things I do. You know remember from over the years is that you know wow. I, don't, I don't remember a lot but I remember seeing something oh <laughs> wow you know what yeah, I remember actually I would see him not just at the radio rarely and he would always support Yeah, and it, it made me feel good because well I mean somebody that's been running the radio for so long and yeah. you know breaking records from the, some of the top artists mm-hmm. in the world for him to show me love it's like oh it's priceless you know so how did you wind up from that to doing records with Cool Keith oh bro, it took I think you know what I remember when I all the dudes paying I will always shout out even on like Cheeky Go Go, like the show uh-huh. for the kids. But other than that, I remember when he came on the. It was a show uh, on at Public Access Cable, and somebody. I remember somebody. I won't say all the names, but it was like somebody wanted to get him. I was like, I know somebody at the show that can interview Keith, and I mm-hmm. put him on. Put him on as somebody's mother. And got him on there. Then I was able to meet him at the Cotton Club. He had an all white suit on and gaiters, <laughs> and and I'm like, I had a I had a joint. I like, I was like, oh my god, if you want to roll it, I was like, I'm gonna see what smoke weed. He's like, yeah. I was. He's like, he had his own weed. I had mine. He didn't. Sh- I, then I knew he was on some real stuff because he didn't share. I was like, that makes sense. You don't. <laughs> you're not supposed to share a joint uh-huh. because. You know, it's nasty. Okay. But a lot of people did anyway. Right. But on his level, there's a lot of people that he knows, you know, so he's like skipping. Now, I respect it, but he, mm-hmm. it was good. I met him, and then after that, I kept going to shows. Like, I remember I caught a Black Tales magazine at the Metro at a Black <laughs> Elvis show, you know. I was dancing in the crowd, sweaty. I was at then it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, you saw the black tails flying there, right? Yeah, because, uh, yeah, go ahead, don't go ahead. Go, I'm sorry, go ahead, tell your story. I mean to cut you off. Go ahead. And, just you know, I see him at the, and then, you know, that was one of the shows we saw. We seen him at the Park West before. And also, over the years, we just see him, Cubby Bear. He was there. I give my, I kept giving my music to life. I gave my music to every New York MC that came in Chicago. Chicago, I went to see, and for some reason, uh, let's see. This is interesting because I remember Abbey Pub. There was a show also, and I was like giving myself there. It was a great show we did, and we're outside. Me and my boy, this one guy named Bill that I grew up with, you know. You know what I'm saying? He was like, hey, do you know where studio, he asked us where studio was at in my head. I was like, well, I'm up north. 
I usually, when I'm up north, I usually try and buy, pay for my time hourly. And I did. I was like, I got to be smart. I can't just ask any uh, idiot, you know, where a studio's at. But now it all finally registered. Years later, mm -hmm. kept going. Then he was at the beauty bar, and I just missed it. I was like, damn, just missed it. Mm -hmm. And but then I did a show. I got a call. Man, between then and there, up to 2012. Uh, someone asked me, do you want to be, uh, do a show, open up for Cool Keith? I said, yeah, only if I can go on right before him. And they said, yeah, sure. Okay. So at the time, remember, I wasn't doing no email. I wasn't doing no Facebook. I was doing Twitter. I was doing no buy nothing. Okay. Email, nothing. And he's like, hey, you know, I was just an underground to the, to, to my, to the core of my life, my world. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, you know what? So when he was like, hey, you know what, uh, let me email you a track. We'll do a track. And I, that's when I first really said, let me get an email. <laughs> that was in 2012. Wow. <laughs> and, then, and, then after, and then after that, years went by, I, I did a show. I had, Actually, we, we, be, we talked. We, be, we talked, them, you know. But then he came to the, uh, there was a bar up north. And he was there it was in logan square and okay. someone said hey he's down the street and he's gonna be i was like oh great i had my backpack on i was about i was moving my stuff in like moving some like i had like three i had like tons of blank cds i was gonna dub okay. that did the next day but i had a, a lot of my merch like okay. about and i was in there so i got in there i was hustling by the time He's, I hear him, he's rhyming, doing San Francisco Harvey and stuff. Then some of the DJs are like, hey, man, you should get on the mic. And I was like, you know what? Shit, I did a show. You know, he, I'm sure he knows who I am, you know. Uh -huh. And he did. He, You know, you know, you think, I, I keep in mind he's always tour, but we did know mm -hmm. of each other. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, so I'm rocking, and the crowd went crazy. They went crazy. And then he called somebody that lived in New York from Chicago. And he said, guess what I'm here with, you know, Rami. He said, oh, yeah, I know him. And, you know, we, and every time after then, it started okay. getting like, you know, then, then that's when it really came crystal clear after that. Then I, after that, we did the Close Encounters mm -hmm. and we kept going and doing the Barnyard. And then we did, you know, I toured with him a couple of times out of state, okay. you know, um, you know, did barnyard, did shock value, energy, uh, you know, gentrification, uh, you know, shark, the little one, that song, uh, okay. and shark, okay. yeah, just, um, you know, the one, you know, just constantly keep on going, you know, mm -hmm. We it was fun recording in the Bronx with him the Sharkless song. Okay, it was it, it was good to get. I took the Greyhound out there thirty. It was after I got off the road with him in two thousand and seventeen ish eighteen. I went out there thirty hour ride there, wow. thirty hour ride back. Wow. But I needed it <laughs> because I needed it, uh -huh. and it made me because I've been in New York a lot of times. You know, I did a show. You know, sometimes you know show whatever, but. Not like this was like the most official experience uh -huh. of, you know, I mean, that was fun because we actually, you know, got off tour and then we're doing the recording and we're going around. He's taking me around and then we went through New Jersey and different, bur you know, it's just fun being around someone that actually knows the city. Uh -huh. You know, it's not like, um, you know, I'm, I'm hanging out with like my favorite, our favorite MCs. Right. in the world, yes, you know. Yes, yes. So it's kind of interesting to meet him and his family mm -hmm. and, um, you know, hang out with him and uh, his girlfriend, which is his wife, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I mean, I don't know. I just, I, I love the experience of getting out. It's fun, yeah. you know, going to eat. You know, at the time I was eating more Chinese food than anything. <laughs> uh, so we get that, you know. He, he loved uh, being a row with him, like going to like through spots like Arkansas, Little Rock, yeah. you know, little diners that got the accent. Here we are, a lady has the accent, 
southern accent. He got the heavy New York Bronx accent, right. and I had the Chicago accent, wow. which is basically, <laughs> you know, what it is in the Midwest, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting chicken and grilled chicken and waffles. And then I don't know if he got pancakes or what he got, but, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. <laughs> you know, but the brisket was good in Arkansas at this one bar that it was good. They were just so happy to see him. Mm -hmm. Everywhere we went, it was fun, to, you know, to go around. And actually, it was, it was probably the best experience of my whole life. And that's just from coming from listening to Cool Keith Ultra Magnetic on HBK to taking it to being on tour. Yeah, but also actually before I listened to WHBK, I heard that I heard more songs from later, like remixes. What made me get into that? I remember in '88, mm -hmm. this one guy. You know how every freshman they dip off and hang out with older people and they yeah. drink like Wild Irish Rose first, that was me. So this one guy had a collection and he had Ultra Magnetic MCs oh, wow. tape in there. Yeah. So later on, the, you know, the later on, I started listening to that same year. I, it was solidified, like, that's it. I dubbed the tape. <laughs> and and then I listened to WHBK. So it thanks to WHBK uh -huh. and Mike, that was... That was no Stan, which is Mike's older brother. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely WHBK over here remixes with stuff like with Godfather Don and stuff I never heard in my life. Like I heard the tape, but I didn't hear all the other stuff. You know, all you know how nine fifty had a lot of stuff too, but y'all had more. Right. That's that's what I'm talking. So you know, WHBK definitely really really helped me out with with that. So right you know, now, so right now, where you at now with the music and your artwork? Um, what, 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 with what, the artwork, what's our coolest? We got, I mean, you know, all these festivals coming up, and you know, been coming up. You know, why we don't see no shark cool on these festivals? Well, you know, it's a we need to see some shark the, cooler. Yeah, you know, it's it's it's, it's kind of like. I, all right, I like to see that too. You know, I guess I've been, you know, how I've been that one and one on one guy like mm -hmm. Haiti, like hip hop, but I can sit down at a table and do it. Okay. I would like to, yeah. but I just like, I creep up and creep out. You know, I don't, I won't say I'm creeping, but I say I just slide in and slide out. Now we see, now we don't. Yeah, kind of like what you do. <laughs> Play all the heavy tracks and then get out of there. Yeah, I, I used to tell people that you know, like you ain't you ain't meant to see me. You know, right. You can hear me, but you ain't meant to see me. So. Right. <laughs> yeah, you say, hey, I'm polite, but I ain't nice. I ain't so nice. <laughs> so, what what you, what projects you got coming up now, or or you laying low? Um, I'm definitely laying low, but I got a um, I've been writing. Uh, I always been I always right, but also um, I have looked for this summer to drop a song and with, with Cool Keith and, and video stuff, and also okay. I'm gonna be putting out um, my old my I'm putting out my old catalog. You know, okay. I'm I can't put it all out at once, but I'm gonna put out a lot of stuff like a lot of stuff surprises, so box sets variety of CDs and tapes and okay. you know no telling sometimes like definitely want to get on the uh, get on the road and stuff with the pande pandemic pandemic rise you know mm. winding down but you got to be cautious it's kind of like okay. look forward to doing shows out of town and in town you know yes indeed you know so, you know where can people find you at in the social media oh. world because now that you got an email <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! Oh, I'll give you my my oh my e my email my email oh yeah my email is is on my website sharkula dot com and then sharkula dot info. I'll spell it S H A R K U L A um, sharkula dot com sharkula dot info. Then also my email is caviar uh, Brian one eighty two at gmail.com that's caviarbrian182 at gmail.com I'll spell it 
C A V I A R B R I A N one eighty two at gmail dot com. My phone number is seven seven three six four seven four nine nine five twenty four seven. My phone might be on low volume. The phone might be dead, but leave a voicemail. Uh oh yeah. Yes, and, um, and what else? Uh wait, let me see one more. Twitter, oh yeah. Uh Caviar Brian one eighty two at G I mean Caviar Brian one eighty two at Twitter. C A V I A R B R I A N one eighty two at Twitter. And oh, if you like to listen to music, it's all on the website with SoundCloud. Okay. Uh, Spotify, YouTube for videos. Um, you know, my my aunt. Can I say one thing that my aunt said? She said, ex- she said, accept the old you and accept the new you. And basically, what the meaning was: be not be unashamed of how far you've evolved, mm-hmm. and realize that you had to start somewhere. Yes, indeed. Yes, and those powerful words. Those yeah. are powerful words because, you know, a lot of times, you know, people don't like where they came from and how they started. And yeah. and, and that kind of throws them in turmoil when they create their new self, when they come into their new self. Yeah. You know, it's so, not keep that real. Yeah. Those those some powerful words. Those are some powerful yeah. words. Yeah. I appreciate it. So I, I was going to say was, I'm glad you asked me that because those – when you said what inspired me to get into the cool key ultramagnetic, uh-huh. it was true. Cause that statement I did say when I had an interview with another magazine and it was that time where I dipped off with the old heads as freshmen, you know, trying to get adjusted, not peer pressure, but I was thirsty. I had gotten drunk, drank some wires, rolls. I'm listening to all a bunch of local stuff, not local stuff, but uh, stuff that you got at the record store. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it be wherever you got it from, Magical Records or Evergreen Plaza, I don't know. But guess, but guess what? It, at Ultra Magnetic in season, then I was like, wow, this is that tat dubbed it. And then I started hearing so many different versions on WHBK later. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, who has all these songs out? And throughout my life, I would listen to it. And, you know, I liked them all, like, you know, you know, yeah. you know, uh, San Francisco, Harvey. Here I am doing ad libs on the road, and you know, or even local <laughs> shows doing San Francisco, Harvey. A girl, let me touch you there. I want to feel you. <laughs> you. You know what I mean? You living the yeah. life. You living. You living. Yes. Life. You know. It's, you know. It's my. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's your favorite MC too because you would play it. That's what kept the heads listening. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, you know what I'm saying? That's, 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 that's some real stuff. So, yeah. I mean, it really was the best thing that happened to us because, you know, it was just such a straight and narrow, you know, you know, pencil lace. Like, our, some guys are sounding the same, but he was coming with some different stuff. Yeah. And, and it was, and a lot of people, yeah, you know. That's, that's, that's real, though. That's real. You know, because yeah. it, it becomes. You know, you know, people want to success, so they start sounding like somebody who's successful. Oh, and they right, forget, and then they forget themselves. Also, could be successful, whatever they, you know, they lame. Be, you, it. Yeah, they could be good. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Somebody could be a good person, but also not be the best MC. But they could apply that in with so much potential and be a. You know, a really good artist. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and that's that's why that's why I like you know doing these things, so that message can get out to somebody who might be struggling with their direction, identity, their identity, yeah. their direction, and unsure about if I should just be myself. Right, and you know what I thought? I, I always tell people the worst MC or rap, the worst MC is a rapper that doesn't even try. Because all right, like <laughs> all right, like just ice. Oh man, yeah. You know when? No, no, no. Let me let me say this. When Ice T first started out, Ice T yeah. was not that good of a rapper. He yeah. Kept added, it added, it added to now where he's one of the nicest MCs. Yeah. He played a I mean? lot of work. 
you know, when Justice first heard a Justice record, you could hear him breathe on the record. Wow. You know, until he got to the point where he got better with it. Wow, so you can hear the improvements with the people that we enjoyed listening right. to. and that's what, that's what I like, you know. Hearing yeah. That, <laughs> hearing that improvement. Of, yeah. You know, that roughness and then like, okay, now nah, I got it. Getting out the static. Yeah, so, yeah, I got to I gotta get up at 2.30. <laughs> oh, oh, word. Yeah, 2.30 in the morning, okay. Yeah, so I can be out the door. <laughs> Yeah, hey, so um, is this going to be up on the YouTube? I'm going to put it on YouTube, and I'm going to send you a copy. Oh, word, man. I, I appreciate it. I'm going I'm to email you a copy. And, uh, okay. You know, and I'm going to put it on Twitter. I'm going to tag it on Twitter. Oh, can, um, I, can, I say what records, can I say what record store is to grab it at? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll go to... In, um, Okay, go to um, Sugar Records in Wicker Park. Go to Lori's Planet of Sound over there in Lincoln Square. Go to Bricker Brack Records in Logan Square. And go to, uh, that's say Regular Records on Belmont. Uh, you know, just go to Regular Records, Lori's Planet of Sound, Bucket of Blood Records over there, um, right there on Belmont, California. And and you know just yeah just keep supporting the hip hop everywhere and treat people how you want to be treated also you had a go you got a GoFundMe page right oh yeah I got a uh, GoFundMe page Sharkula GoFundMe page your um your donations I really appreciate it cause you know it's um you know it's 2022 support the art uh support the art and you know I appreciate it I appreciate you uh you know, Eric Caldwell always keep it as thorough. Yes indeed. Yes indeed. Yep. Real in the field, like they say, holy field. <laughs> and thank you, <laughs> thank you for doing this. You know, thank you for giving me you your welcome. time and discussing your show sure. and everything. And so yep. hopefully we can sit back down again and do this again. I would know, love to, man. You know, and, and we could discuss, you know, other stuff, you know. Don't Sound like a plan. Hard, but he definitely Thank you. So, yeah, you welcome, man. Thank you. Like they say, Spanish people say "denada," you know, "denada." But I say, uh, you're welcome, brother. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you too. Yeah. Um. Word up, man. Have a have a blessed night. You too. Yep. Yeah, thank you, brother. You welcome. Bye.